Thursday on June 25th, the Korean War broke out. The Korean War gets a lot less attention than the wars that America participates. Korea is divided down the middle, formerly occupied by Japan. Korean history holds many devastating wars and internal conflicts, but over the past 70 years, the country's economy has become one of the world's leading economies. In this episode, I want to dedicate some time to a city that may not be as famous among tourists, but has a huge impact on the country's economy today. Located on the shores of the Japanese Sea, at the mouth of the Tevanam River, this city is rich not only in natural resources and history, but also serves as the capital of those Korea's industry. It is home to the world's largest car factory and shipyard, and the main park of this city is also recognized as the largest park in South Korea. Intrigued? Welcome to Ulsan. Wow! One day I woke up at 6 in the morning with an irresistible urge to go somewhere, so I planned a route and set off on a small journey. I decided to go to the sea today, I woke up early and now it's 10.30 in the morning, it takes 2 hours to get there, but it's an incredibly beautiful place. Important fact for tourists, if you see a red sign on the taxi's head window, it means the taxi is available, and if you see a green sign, it's occupied. I got off at the wrong stop, so I waited for the bus now, the 126 will arrive in 10 minutes. Actually, why didn't I tell you about Ulsan, the city where I currently live first, I asked myself. And I decided to head to the shores of the Japanese sea to relax, get inspired and come up with a plan for the future. By the way, do you see that little car on the other side of the road? Local women usually drive around in such small cars and sell various snacks and drinks. It's kind of mobile shop. One more interesting fact, almost all Koreans prefer dark colored clothes. While I was riding the bus, I was the only one dressed in the bright green jacket and the white hat. I feel like a sore thumb here. The bus routes are organized very strangely here. For some reason, the bus brought me back instead of taking me to my intended destination. And now I have to head in back. bus has special instruction on how to connect to the local Wi-Fi. And in this video we are passing by the massive Hyundai factory facility. While I was riding I did a lot of transfers because I mixed up the buses and stops, but here in Korea all transfers are free within 30 minutes. One trip costs 1250 won and I ended up Pain only once. What I particularly like is the road markings. School zones are especially highlighted. If you decide to travel by bus like me, hold on tight because the bus drivers here speed as if they were Formula One racers. And yeah, here we go. This is the place I was looking for.
and finally I made it to this place and now I'm sitting and enjoying the views of the sea the way water hits the rocks is something incredible I've been dreaming of coming to the sea for so long and just recently I saw such a place in Instagram, a cafe right on the seashore and I thought to myself I must go there urgently two hours later, five transfers or something like that and here I am In the end, what is Old Sun City known for? This city is not as popular among tourists as Seoul or Busan, but it's known as the country's largest industrial city, the world's largest shipyard, Hyundai Heavy Industries, which is better known as a manufacturer of Hyundai cars, is located here. This is where the production center is located, from where cars are shipped around the world on ferries. And right across the river is an oil refinery owned by SK Energy. This is a promotional video that I found on YouTube, which talks about all the Korea's industrial might and why Korea holds a leading position in the world. In short, the city is entirely focused on industry. The city is quite large, with a population of about 1.5 million people. In the center of the city stands a statue called the Industrial Tower, which is a symbol of the largest industrial city. In the past, Ulsan was a center of whaling industry. This business was very popular around the world in the mid-20th century and it led to the catastrophic disappearance of whales. Fortunately, South Korea ceased its whaling activities by 2005 and the whale museum was opened. Whale cultural village. It is a really small town that includes several museum, exhibition and entertainment complexes. There is also an improvisational city that recreated the atmosphere of those times. Incredible views, children's complexes with the entertainment for kids and a small park for quiet walks. In addition, there is also a dolphin show and a 5D theater here. Hey friends, hello everyone! Today I made it to the whale village. This funicular lit somewhere up and I think that's where the village is located. Firstly, I'm going to visit the museum and then I'll ride the funicular. I think it's going to be so cool, we will climb right up the mountain and I believe it will be very beautiful. Let's see! This is what the ship looked like that they used to go out to sea for whale hunting. I can't even imagine, oh my god, what is it? Is it real? No, no way. No, I think it's a mock-up of the baby whale. This is real? Oh my god. This is the real. I had no idea that there would be even more exhibits on the second floor. Much more interesting the third floor, where there are exhibits and skeletons of whales, dolphins and killer whales that inhabit the nearby waters. The most interesting and horrifying part of the museum exhibit was a part that showed wild whales were hunted. They made gelatin, paper film, capsules and machine oil from liver, they made oil and rackets. Just look at this, cookies, dishwashing detergents, lipsticks, creams, wax crayons, pencils and so much more. 
It turns out they didn't just kill whales for their meat and ivory, they produced so many things. It's just unbelievable. My favorite part of this building is the exhibition hall with a panoramic view of the river. Honestly, I'm not the best correspondent or cultural reviewer. For example, I came here specifically to see and feel the scale of the whale and compare it to myself. I could never imagine something so massive and I don't think this model is even the largest individual. As far as I know, the blue whale is considered the largest whale in the world and can reach up to 30 meters in length. The second floor houses a children's entertainment room. Is this some kind of a game? And next on the itinerary was a trip to the whale village. Here I was very happy to ride the funicular alone and enjoy the beauty around me. The next stop was a village that recreated the atmosphere of the 60s and 70s when whaling was prevalent. Now there will be a mini tour of the streets of the town. The longer I walked around this town, the more I couldn't shake the feeling that I had seen it before. These streets, the atmosphere, and these strange children's figures, everything seemed strangely familiar. After some time, I decided to google it, and it turned out that I wasn't imagining things. Play Drama Squid Game has led to a surge in the popularity of playground games featured in the series. And one place that's making the most of this trend is Changsengpo Whale Culture Village in Ulsan, which has created an area where families can enjoy the games and reminisce about life in the 60s and 70s. Ian Jin has more. What used to be an empty lot has been turned into the playground from Squid Game. People of all ages are gathering at the Whale Culture Village in Changsengpo, Ulsan to take part in games featured in the Netflix TV series. Children cannot watch Squid Game, but its popularity has spread around schools. It's been a lot of fun coming out here to play the different games from Squid Game with the children. 
From marbles to tracing shapes on Dalgona candy, as well as the Korean version of Red Light Green Light, some participants also reenact scenes from the show. The Dangsengpo Whale Culture Village was created in 2015 to show what the village looked like in the 60s and 70s when whale hunting was prevalent. And now, thanks to the TV show, more than 10,000 people visit each weekend. Thank you for visiting this place to experience memories from the lifestyle of our past. We will do our best to take care of this neighborhood to preserve our memories. This whale culture village serves as a place for adults to reminisce about the past and as a family play playground for the younger generations. Yoon Jin, Arirang News. Walking through this installation that creates atmosphere of those times, the thought of the progressing upward the movement of the country's economy becomes even more overwhelming. When you are in Ulsan, be sure to visit this place. In general, I really enjoyed it. I went to the museum, rode the funicular, and traveled through time for only 15,000 won. You can also go out to sea on a tourist boat here to try your luck at seeing whales and dolphins as well. Despite being an industrial city of four centuries, Ulsan has become a candidate for hosting the 2028 Olympic Games along with Busan. Among the city's other achievements, the Grand Ulsan Park is the biggest park in all of South Korea. And overall, Ulsan has proven to be a much larger and more unique city than it may seem at first glance. Undoubtedly, Korea has won my heart completely. However, I see only one side of the coin. Like any country, Korea has its downsides. And in my opinion, the biggest problem in Korea is that people forget that they are human beings. They are completely immersed in this world of capitalism and quickly lose themselves in the endless race for the social status, for wealthness, achievements, and proving for everyone around them that they matter. There is too much pressure and stress. That's why Koreans spend their weekends with their loved ones, children, pets, somewhere in nature, far away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Observatory where I was is visible there. Just look at this view. It's fabulous. When I arrived at the Buddhist temple and saw the entrance gates, my heart stopped with the riot of colors and majestic beauty. In 
In order to answer the question about the national religion of South Koreans, I needed to study a multitude of materials, films and articles, and this topic is so extensive that it deserves a separate YouTube video. At first glance, Buddhism seems to be the most obvious answer to this question. However, currently only 5-7% of the entire population in modern Korea identifies themselves as Buddhists. What about the rest? Some consider the founding of the first Korean kingdom, Ko Chosun, as the moment when, along with the establishment of the Korean statehood, the world itself emerged and together with it the rituals of worship in the heavens, the earth, and their unity, which implies shamanism. The freedom of religion declared in South Korea after World War II allowed shamanism to be preserved as a religion. Practicing shamans were associated with the theocratic movement, so it became regarded as a source of Korean cultural uniqueness. Before that time, the country had undergone religious persecution. Buddhism was replaced by Confucianism, then Christianity, and then the return of Buddhism in the 60s with the arrival of President Park Chun Hee. And all of this ultimately led to religious syncretism, which means the fusion of the heterogeneous religious doctrines and cults in the process of the interpenetration of religions in their historical development. In simple terms, all religious recorded in historical chronology were built according to the local customs and culture of the people. According to statistics, the majority of people identify themselves as atheists, which is around 50%. The other half of the population belongs to the other religious groups, and the majority of people are Catholics and Protestants. Unexpected, isn't it? There are a lot of churches in Korea, and their burning crosses can be seen literally everywhere. Although many Koreans try to hide it, but Almost every person has visited a shaman or fortune teller at least once. As you can see, shamanism is still alive here. There are many beautiful Buddhist temples in Korea, and the temple in Ulsan is no exception. It's definitely worth visiting for its incredible beauty and atmosphere, as well as the stunning views of the city that can be seen from there. Now we can move on with peace of mind. We are headed to the next location which I stumbled upon on my way to the temple. And now I want to go back and see what it is. It was a dinosaur park or something similar. The coolest thing, it's all free. This is a free outdoor playground stylized in the Jurassic period with free parking and interactive dinosaurs. Thanks to the vibrant colors of the streets in Korea, the road markings and the abundance of outdoor advertising, on sunny days Korea appears to be a cartoon universe come to life. And it looks really awesome.
As I was creating this video, not only did I discover this city, but this city also had relieved me in new ways each time. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to visit all beautiful places in Ulsan yet, but this isn't our last encounter, is it? There is still so many new discoveries ahead, but for now I want to savor this moment. I wish for everyone to explore new places as often as possible and to explore oneself more deeply. Be open to new knowledge and be open to the world. And may there always be a sunny spring in your heart. Нет, ты туда в тень сядь, а я на солнце сяду, и так черный. Во. Yeah.